Hi, you're welcome to Dr. White TV series. Last week, we started the topic hypertension. We talked about how the heart works as a pump, supplying blood to every part of the body, from the head down to the skin and every other part of the body. We talked about elevated blood pressure occurring when the heart finds it difficult to supply blood to the appropriate quarters, that is when there's an increased resistance. We defined blood pressure above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury has hypertension. Likewise, we also discussed the normal blood pressure differing with age, sex, and race, and we classified hypertension. We also talked about the expected blood pressure at home, at work, and we told you why you have those kind of head blood pressures. We explained why you're likely going to have those kind of blood pressures. We also talked about those who will likely have hypertension in future, which includes all the things we talked about last week. So today, we'll begin our discussion with talking about the causes of elevated blood pressure. Stay tuned. causes of blood pressure could include things like pregnancy. Now, pregnancy is not meant to be a problem, but there are times people while pregnant would have what we call preeclampsia or eclampsia, which is a complication of preeclampsia. And it is not, like I said earlier on, it is not that pregnancy is meant to be a problem or pregnancy is meant to be associated with hypertension, but sometimes the body system may react to one or two things or the person may have some conditions which you would get to know if you meet your doctor in the hospital and ask questions and that can result to ha them having elevated blood pressure while pregnant. Likewise, people who have thyroid diseases which include things like goiter or swelling of the neck. So it's not unusual for people who have swelling on the neck to have elevated blood pressure. It could simply mean that the thyroid gland is working too much and producing too much of hormones which is responsible for increasing the blood pressure. People with heart problems, there are different categories of people with heart, blood, uh, with heart problems. There are some people that are born with abnormalities of the heart. There are some people who have a problem with the valves of the heart muscle which could also be an abnormality or could be a problem which could occur later on as a result of things like some infections or, um, or, or after the heart must have been stressed up probably due to some conditions could also cause that. Likewise, people who have problems with the electrical conduction of the, of the uh, conductive system of the heart, the heart has its own power generating compartments where it creates electricity. So that electricity is what excites the muscles of the heart and makes it contract and relax and contract and relax. And that contraction and that electricity produces what makes the heart pump blood. So they, if the heart stops producing electricity, there will be a problem with the contraction and that could also lead to heart problem. Likewise, if the electricity being produced by the heart, if the voltage that is being produced by the heart is low, it can also lead to heart problems. People with kidney diseases or adrenal problems, the kidney is the bean shaped structure that is located at the back, we call it retroperitoneal space, that's at the back and it has something on top of it that looks like this, which we call the adrenal gland. So if any of this has a problem, that is if the person has a kidney problem or the adrenal gland is actually misbehaving, it can cause elevated blood pressure. And these are some of the things that we look out for in the hospital. So, I'm going to talk to you about how to diagnose hypertension. Hypertension is diagnosed by checking your blood pressure at least four hours apart on two different occasions with a sphygmomanometer. I'm going to show you what a sphygmomanometer looks like. According to GNC8, anybody that comes to the hospital with a blood pressure above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury is hypertensive. Don't forget we said last week that as you get older, the risk of having hypertension increases. So anybody above 60 years of age that has elevated 
blood pressure above 150 over 90 millimeters of mercury is hypertensive anybody with a blood pressure that is above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury and the person is less than 60 years of age is hypertensive so i'm going to talk to you about the warning signs and symptoms of hypertension actually hypertension does not usually have a symptom but most people who come to the hospital and complain of um, persistent headache happen to be hypertensive and so we would say headache is the commonest symptom you would have if you are hypertensive however don't forget you may not have any other symptom so the best way you can confirm if you are hypertensive or not is have your blood pressure checked however there could be other warning signs which may be associated with hypertension but trust me once those warning signs starts coming it simply means you are most likely having complications of high blood pressure and they include poor sight that is the person may be finding it difficult to read very well as compared to his or her former state bleeding from the nose which we call epistasis ringing sensation in the ear which we call tinnitus easy fatigability meaning the person just get tired easily or probably after walking a short distance the person just get tired the person may be aware of his heart beating now every other person on a normal day you probably don't even know your heart is beating because it's soundproof it's silent just doing its normal beep 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 but someone who is hypertensive may be having the feeling and just like the person is afraid so the person has this feeling of my heart is beating fast i can feel my heart is beating likewise person may also be having shortness of breath which means by the time the person walks probably just a hundred meters the person starts panting like i'm tired <sighs> that also is a complication of hypertension or the person's heart is already going into failure cough or difficulty in breathing especially while lying flat is um, it could also a, a symptom or a complication of hypertension so most times if you go to bed and you use probably two pillows or more pillows to prop yourself up in bed so that you stop coughing if you do that then you should know you're likely having a complication of hypertension somebody who has swollen legs could also be a complication of poor blood pressure control or heart failure anybody who has tingling sensation all over the body like some people complain that they have something moving all over their body or they feel some things like shocking them in their legs it's important you have your blood pressure checked because you might also be having elevated blood pressure so we'll be talking about how to check your blood pressure at home there are three types of blood pressure monitors you may find in markets now those three types of blood pressure monitors are okay now don't forget the blood pressure monitor is the same thing as figmo manometer which is the sfig we use to check blood pressure and they are the mercury sphygmo manometer or the mercury type of blood pressure monitor which is this is a picture of the mercury type of the blood pressure monitor we have the aneroid blood pressure monitor which is this is also an example of the aneroid blood pressure monitor we also have the digital blood pressure monitor which is the commonest you may have in your house or in your car or thereabout now this is an example of what the digital blood pressure monitor looks like it is important you have your own blood pressure monitor at home now whether you are hypertensive or not you should have your own blood pressure monitor at home and the reason is this it's important you monitor your blood pressure why because health is wealth and if you check your blood pressure and you notice any little bit of change in your blood pressure is important you go to the hospital to confirm on the other hand even if you don't have your own personal blood pressure monitor you can always go to the hospital once in a while to have your blood pressure checked in the hospital and if you have your blood pressure monitor 
it is important you bring it to the hospital also you see there are a lot of things that are important it's important you have your blood pressure monitor it is important you bring your blood pressure monitor to the hospital for calibration why do we do this calibration we do the calibration because there's a possibility your blood pressure monitor might not be accurate or you might not know how to use it properly so if you bring your blood pressure monitor to the hospital what we do is you could meet the doctor or the nurse to help you compare the blood pressure your monitor gives with the one the hospital um, gives you also if you have any of these other types we're talking about the mercury and the aneroid type you always have to make sure that it starts from zero and you also have to make sure that you use it the appropriate way which we're going to talk about very soon as that today there is no way you can check your blood pressure on your mobile phone by putting your finger or your thumb on a particular application you downloaded on your mobile phone or your or your or your device reason is i've seen people who come to the hospital telling us that they check their blood pressure and their blood pressure was normal and when we ask how did you check it they bring out their phone and they tell you an application they downloaded I, but i've seen a lot of applications on android that tell you just put blood pressure check monitor you put your thumb on it and it's a scan and we just give you a particular value don't be deceived it's not real i've seen a lot of people who broke down with um who broke who came down with stroke and by the time we check the blood pressure, they tell you they check their blood pressure regularly at home. And you'll be like, how do you check it? Now we just checked it on his hand. They'll tell you they checked it at home and it was normal. So please don't forget, don't be deceived. And don't bring your Android phone to the hospital to calibrate it. We will seize the phone. All right, that's a joke. <laughs>